Hey, what's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today, I wanna to show you how to easily update RetroArch. Recently, the guys over the LibRetro team have put out some really awesome RetroArch updates. And if you're on an older version, you can't use them. So in this video, I wanna show you how to easily update to the latest RetroArch to get all the newest features. Now it's pretty simple to do here. I use RetroArch for a lot of my systems inside of LaunchBox, especially the lower end systems like SNES, Sega Genesis, Atari. It's just really easy to set up and the emulation is pretty much spot on for these lower end emulators. Before we get into updating, I'm gonna launch RetroArch. I'm just gonna right click on a game that I'm using RetroArch as an emulator for. Open RetroArch. In the lower left hand corner, you can see I'm on version 1.67. As of making this video, the newest version is 1.72. I actually downgraded to show you that we can update really easily and not lose any settings at all. I also have my FPS listed in the lower left hand corner. I have adjusted the size of it and the positioning through RetroArch. I've moved it up a little bit and I've changed the user interface. I want to show you guys that when updating this way, you don't lose any settings, you won't lose any cores, and if you've set up any emulators in a specific way, it will be exactly the same as you left it. Unfortunately, we cannot update through RetroArch, so we'll have to close it down and head over to the LibRetro website. Link will be in the description. So from here, we're going to head up to Downloads. We're going to find our version, Windows. I'm using the 64-bit version. And we want to download underscore retroarch.7zip and redisk.7zip. So we'll download these real quick. They're going into my downloads folder, so I'm going to open that up. And they're right here. So what we want to do is extract these into our retroarch folder. Now my retroarch is located in my launchbox directory, emulators, retroarch. Here's the old version that I'm running here, 1.67, and we're gonna update it real quick. So we're gonna highlight underscore retroarch.7zip and redisk.7zip. I'm gonna right click. I'm using WinRAR to extract these, but you can use 7zip. I'll leave links in the description if you wanna get a hold of either of these. Extract files. From here, we need to navigate to our retroarch folder. Launchbox, emulators, RetroArch. So we're right here. LaunchBox, Emulators, RetroArch. Click OK. You might be prompted to replace some existing files. This is totally normal. It will not overwrite any of the settings you've saved. Yes to all. And we're updated. I'm going to relaunch RetroArch. And as you can see, I'm on 1.72. Also kept all of my settings here. Now one of the coolest features of this new 1.72 update is latency. I do want to do a complete video on this because it's a really interesting concept and it works very well, but it's per game per emulator based. If you set this up correctly, you will actually have faster input from your gamepad than you would on original consoles, but it needs to be set up correctly and it's a little in depth, so I do want to do a complete video on that. Keep an eye out for that video. So that's it for this video guys, I really appreciate you watching. I've had so many people ask me how to update RetroArch without losing any cores or settings, and this is the only way I know. It's really simple to do, as you saw, all links will be in the description. If you guys have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.